You're getting a sneak peek of that hot Austin Evans video before it goes live. Yo guys, Jonathan here. This is an abnormally long microphone. More importantly though, this is the brand new Galaxy S8. But before you pick one up, here are 10 things to know. So first up, and maybe most importantly, the Galaxy S8 should not explode. <laughs> Now, yeah, I get it. It sounds funny, it's easy to joke about, but this is a huge deal and Samsung cannot afford to have a repeat situation after the whole Note 7 fiasco. During the announcement, Samsung did not shy away from the whole battery deal. They, in fact, embraced it and announced moving forward, they now have an eight-point battery inspection in place, which, again, some people are gonna joke and laugh at it, but I gotta tip my hat to Samsung for handling it so well. Now, the second thing to know is there is not only just a Galaxy S8, there is also a Galaxy S8 Plus. Now, surprisingly, the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are more similar than you might expect, and there really are only two differences between them. The first of which is the screen size. The Galaxy S8 is rocking a 5.8 inch display, while the Galaxy S8 Plus is rocking a 6.2 inch display. They're both rocking four gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, both have micro SD card expandability, and really, the only other difference between the two is the battery capacity. The Galaxy S8 features 3,000 milliamp hours, where the Galaxy S8 Plus is gonna get you slightly more at 30 500. Now, where it gets interesting, though, is despite having the difference in the screen size, both of these share the exact same resolution, coming in at 2960 by 1440. So that actually leads me to point number three, which is the fact that these screens are freaking beautiful. If you're out there wondering what the heck kind of resolution is 2960 by 1440, it's actually very similar to what we saw on the LG G6. Samsung just decided to change it up ever so slightly. So with the G6, I introduced an extra long 18 by nine display. And for you mathematicians out there, yes, I know it is two by one. With the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, however, this is slightly longer at eight and a half by nine. So Samsung is screwing up math for everybody. So the idea behind the extra tall display is that it's gonna give you more screen real estate and more room for activities when you're playing around with apps and multitasking. As far as consuming media and watching video, it is still a little bit weird considering the fact that most of it out there is geared for 16 by nine. But honestly, I really like what Samsung and LG are doing with the taller displays. What you also may have noticed is the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus look very similar to what we've seen in the past on something like the Galaxy S7 Edge. Samsung is dubbing this the infinite display. Essentially what that fancy pants Buzz Lightyear naming means is the display is now edge to edge, effectively getting rid of the pixels and my goodness, it looks good. Now next up at number four, something that may freak people out. Because of that infinite endless display, there is no physical home button. So we've seen Apple implement this with the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, and if you've used those, you kind of have an idea of how it works and how it feels, but if this is new to you, it is kind of weird at first. For me personally, I don't mind it at all since it's something I'm used to, but I know a lot of people out there really love their physical home button, so let me know what you guys think with a comment down below. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the infinite display has almost kind of had this butterfly effect on everything. Because of the display, there is no physical home button. And because there is no physical home button, there is now no longer a fingerprint reader on the front of the phone. Now, if you're freaking out wondering, did they remove the fingerprint reader? Nope, they just moved it to a stupid, awkward place on the back. There are a ton of things that I really like about the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, but the location of the fingerprint reader simply doesn't make sense. For reasons I have no idea why, it is placed off to the side next to the camera, which makes it kind of awkward to access. This may definitely change after using it for an extended period of time, but right now I kept wanting to press the camera and nobody wants fingerprints on their camera. Now, next up at number five, like most Samsung phones, the camera on this thing looks like it's going to be awesome. As far as the rear shooter goes, this is rocking a 12 megapixel sensor F1.7 with OIS. Now, I will say I was only able to view the photos back on the phone itself and not look at them on a computer, but initial impression so far is that the camera is really sharp. As far as the front camera goes, the Galaxy S8 features a pretty impressive 8 megapixel sensor up front. It's got a nice wide lens, and again, like the rear facing camera, initial impressions are solid. And just in case you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish my phone had some slightly weird Snapchat like filters built in, now with the Galaxy S8, you got it. So, next up at number six is the iris scanner, which is gonna scan your eyes to unlock your phone. So this was actually introduced to the Galaxy Note 7. We, of course, know what happened there, but it is brand new to the Galaxy S line. Now, as far as the iris scanner goes, that always wasn't the quickest option to unlock your phone. But in addition to that, Samsung has now rolled out face unlock, which is much, much faster. I got a chance to check that out for myself and it was pretty much instantaneous. You gotta really pay attention when you're watching the video. But if you're looking for a really speedy, quick way to access your phone, face unlock works well. 
So next up at number seven, joining me right now is Austin always wears a small Very Evans. True. Secret to gains, yep. wear a size down. Actually, number seven, the Galaxy S8, surprisingly, features a headphone jack. That makes it a bad phone though. That's not true. I thought all good phones had to have no headphone jack. Isn't that? Oh my God. Didn't they read the 2017? Tim Cook has brainwashed Austin Evans. You can't have a headphone jack in 2017. Tim Cook has brain. how it works. Tim Cook has brainwashed Austin Evans. I've got a cramp. Ah, uh, got a cramp. Ken, what'd you do? Damn witchcraft. Back to business. In addition to the headphone jack, there is also now USB-C on the Galaxy S8, just like we saw on the Note 7. Personally, I am a huge fan of USB-C and I wish everything had it so it could be one simple, beautiful form factor, technology, advancement. Yeah, all of those. Next up at number eight after that disaster, no surprise here, but the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus feature wireless charging. Now I know someone out there right now is rapidly typing through their keyboard. Wireless charging, stupid, no one uses it. While that may be true, the one plus I can see to this is that the wireless charging docks that go alongside the Galaxy S8 look really, really nice, and I would love to see that on a desk. Next up at number nine, just like wireless charging, no surprise here, the Galaxy S8 is IP68 water and dust resistant. It is not groundbreaking, it is not new, but if you wanna use your shiny new Galaxy S8 in the bathtub, in the shower, you can do it. Last up at number 10, Samsung is taking shots at Google Assistant, trying to take over with their new personal assistant, Bigsby, which makes me think of Bubsy Bobcat. Honestly, it was kind of hard to get a true feel of how that works. I'm gonna hold back till I actually get the device in-house and use it myself for a bit. But just after seeing initial reactions, the general consensus seems to be that most people would not prefer this over Google Assistant. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Hit that share button maybe if you're feeling like being extra awesome. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so because I'll probably be giving away a brand new Galaxy S8 soon. There actually is a chance to win a brand new red iPhone right now, which you can check out here. This is Jonathan, and I'll catch you guys later.